Uh, these notes are on integer exponents. Um, so a couple of definitions here. Um, just a reminder from uh, last year, Math 1, that a linear function is a function that grows at a constant rate. Exponential function is a function that grows uh, by a constant factor. Um, a rational number is any number that can be written as a over b, where a and b are integers. Integers being the numbers that you see on the number line, that are written on a number line, that sit in a math classroom. Um, so um, negative 3, negative 2, negative 1, 0, 1, 2, 3, etc. on both ends. Um, square root is a number when multiplied by itself produces a given number. Cube root is a number or expression when multiplied together three times produces a given number. Um, now we're going to look at some properties of exponents. Um, so the first thing, we're going to use some examples to come up with the rules. Um, so the first example I'm going to use is 3 squared times 3 to the fifth. Now remember, 3 squared means I'm multiplying 3 times 3. And 3 to the 5th means I'm multiplying by 3 times 3 times 3 times 3 times 3. Now, if I can expand 3 squared out to be 3 times 3, and expand 3 to the 5th out to be 3 times 3 times 3 times 3 times 3, then I can actually condense this to be written as 3 to the 7th. So the rule here is that when I have a number a with some power, we'll use the, number, the letter m, times a letter a with some power, we'll use the letter n, that in order to get 2 and 5, what do I do to the 2 and the 5 to get 7? I add them. So it's going to equal a to the power of m plus n. Our second rule is going to be um, 5 to the 4th over 5 squared. 5 to the 4th, if I expand that out, means 5 times 5 times 5 times 5. And 5 squared, if I expand that out, means 5 times 5. Now, since I'm multiplying here, it also means that I am, and, and multiplying on the top, multiplying on the bottom, but this bar here, this fraction bar, actually means division. So it turns out that I can divide, I can create a bunch of ones here. So 5 over 5 is a 1, and 5 over 5 is a 1, which means I'm left with 5 times 5, which I can write to condensed form as 5 squared. So what did I do to the power 4 and 2 to get to 2? I subtracted them. So a to the m divided by a to the n equals a to the m minus n. Our next example is 10 to the 5th to the power of 3. So this power of 3 means I have 10 to the 5th times 10 to the 5th times 10 to the fifth. Well now, I'm actually back to the first rule, which says that if my bases are the same, 10, 10, and 10, what I do to the powers is add them. So I have 10 to the 15th. So now I look back at my original problem, 3 and 5, and what did I do to the 3 and the 5 to get 15? Well, I multiplied them. So a to the m all raised to the n power is going to be a to the mn power, multiplying them. Our next example deals with actually two properties. And the easiest way to um, see these two properties in action is to actually look at an exponential equation and a table of values. So I'm going to create a table here. where I have an x value, and I'm going to use a 2 to the x. So um, what I'm going to do here is I'm going to fill in a table, negative 3, negative 2, negative 1, 0, 1, 2, 3. And I'm 
going to start by filling in um, where x is 1, 2, and 3. I know those. So I've got 2 to the 1, which is 2, 2 squared, which is 4, and 2 cubed, which is 8. So when I'm looking at these numbers, um, I can see that to go from 1 to the next, I'm multiplying by 2. I'm now going to fill in this portion of the um, table, um, just like I did this first portion. So 2 to the 1, 2 squared, 2 cubed. So this would be 2 to the negative 3, 2 to the negative 2, 2 to the negative 1, and 2 to the 0 power. Now, if going bigger on my table, bigger x's, I'm dividing, multiplying by 2, excuse me, that must mean that going this way, I would divide by 2. So 2 divided by 2 is 1. 2 divided by 2 is 1 half, and I'm going to leave some space here for a reason. 1 half divided by 2 is 1 fourth. 1 fourth divided by 2 is 1 eighth. So now if I look at these numbers, I have a 2, 4, 8. Down here I have a 2, 4, 8. It turns out though that the 2, 4, 8 up here are in the denominator. So a 2 to the negative power moves it in the denominator. Oops. So now I have two rules here. Um, one of them is that a to the 0 power is 1. Any number to the 0 power is going to be 1. And that has to do with the fact, again, looking at this table, it's an exponential equation. When I am getting bigger and bigger x's, I'm multiplying by 2. When my x's get smaller, that must mean I have to go backwards, which would be to divide by 2. So 2 to the 1, or any number to the 1, is going to be itself. And when I divide that self by itself, I get 1. The one catch here being that I must indicate that a cannot equal 0. Um, 0 to the 0 power is a concept that you will learn more about in upper division math classes. Um, but for now, um, it, it doesn't mean anything because you can't divide by 0. Um, and so... Um, just for our purposes, we need to indicate that a can't equal 0. The second um, rule that we get out of this problem is that um, a to a negative power is always going to be 1 over a to the positive of that power, which means that if I have a 1 over a to the negative n, that that acts, that ends up, being 1 over 1 over a to the n, which is the same as a to the n. So I often talk about the negative exponent being an elevator action, that it's going to move my, um, my expression either up or down, depending upon where it sits, um, and changes the, the power to be a positive power. Um, let's look at um, one last problem here. Um, 3 times 2 to the third power. Now that means I have 3 times 2 times 3 times 2 times 3 times 2. There's three of them, third power, 1, 2, 3. But I can rearrange that because it's multiplication to be 3 times 3 times 3 times 2 times 2 times 2. Where 3 times itself 3 times can be written as 3 cubed. And 2 times itself 3 times can be written as 2 cubed. So my rule here being that if I have two numbers, a and b, and I am multiplying them um, to with an exponent, that I end up with, well, let's change this just a little bit. Let's say that this is um, x and m. So then I end up with a to the xn times b to the mn. And similarly, if I had a subtraction problem, if I had 
uh, sorry, in a division problem, if I had a to the x over b to the m to the power of n, it would equal a to the xn over b to the m.